So, very good afternoon to all my dear students. I welcome you all into the industrial pharmacy two. Sorry, industrial pharmacy first. <laughs> student in the yesterday's lecture we had started the packaging materials in which we have to study we have to go through the role importance and the requirements of the pharmaceutical packaging then we have to go through the basic properties of the different packaging materials then in order to go through all these we have to move through like purpose requirement types the different types of the packaging systems the different type of containers and the closure system now, while studying this, we had gone through the definition of the packaging. What is the pharmaceutical packaging? What does it will contain? What are the role of the pharmaceutical packagings? What are the purposes for which the packaging that is to be done, which can be summarized in the form of IPIPC, that is the identification, protection, information, presentation, and the convenience. Then we saw the different kinds of packaging, which is said to be the primary packaging, secondary packaging, and the tertiary packaging. So the primary packaging that will remain directly in contact with that of the product, whereas the primary packaged material that is going to be placed into the secondary packaging. And the secondary packaging that will be placed into the carton for the process of the shipment and the storage. Then we saw the different requirements for the packaging. Then the pharmaceutical packaging, the criteria for the selection of the containers or the packaging materials. There are different criteria of the criteria and their suitability to the high speed machineries. Then we saw the interaction that is going to be occurring between the product and the packaging material. We also studied the purpose for which the packaging that is going to be intended or the different kind of information that is going to be presented or that is going to be provided in the form of the packaging materials so the packaging that will increase the surface area of the presentation where we can give lots and lots of the information then we saw the pharmaceutical containers and its definition as per the pharmacopoeia the different types of the containers we saw we saw the airtight container, we saw the hermetically sealed container, we saw the light resistant containers, and we were on to the types of the containers, so like the multiple dose container, sealed container, and the single dose container. So these are the different kinds of containers. While studying the multiple dose container, we said that it is the container that will hold the quantity of the preparation that is suitable for two or more doses, like say these are the vials, injectable vials where the multiple injections that can be given by taking out the content out of these valves, just the needle need to be inserted by functioning the closure, the content has to be taken out and then it has to be injected to the patient. So these are the multiple dose containers. Then there is a sealed container. A sealed container, it is going to be a closed by fusion of a material of the container. Like say, you can see in case of the Whilst they will contain some of the aluminum caps that is going to be crimped uh, at their neck, which is to be broken first of all. Then there are single dose containers. Now these are the single dose container which are associated with that of the ampules or in case of most of the pediatric uh, formulations like say the zental suspension, like say the albendazole suspension, right? where the dose that will contain only single, although some excess quantity that will remains, but that should not be administered and that is to be discarded. So it is just for the single use. That's why these are the single dose container. It is the container that will hold a quantity of the preparation intended for total or partial use of a single administration. That means just a single administration that is advisable in case of the product that are going to be package in such a types of the containers that is the single dose container then there is a temper evident container temper evident container it will ensure that the product that is not get broken 
or that is not get open now once it is going to be broken or once it is going to be open it cannot be resealed so the person or the patient or the observer very clearly come to know that it is going to be tampered or it is going to be opened somewhere and it is not the sealed one so as you can see there are different kinds of the tamper evident container there is a heat shrink bank this band that is going to be applied with the help of use of a heat so which cannot be removed or which can be removed just by tearing it off and once it will get teared that means it is going to be tampered that means it is going to be broken in the, the same kind of seal that you will going to see toward the uh, opening of the uh, our household lpg gas isn't it whether it may be indian or whether it may be hp just it, it is the aluminum or it is the plastic shrink band that is going to be uh, crimped over onto that of the neck and once that uh, cap has to be removed that means that plastic that will get totally broken that will get tampered then there are some of the tamper evident closures which are in association or which are going to be hold with the rim around their neck and the cap and once it has to be broken that means uh, it is going to be tampered or it cannot be further resealed you can see clearly the difference here it is attached with the help of the small plastics notch but here it is not there that means this is the tempered one some of the decorative temper evident labels are going to be stick or these are going to be attached so that means that will it will ensure that when these are not in uh, properly alignment with this that means it is going to be open because these are the screw uh, screw cap and this has to be removed by rotating it toward the left side now once we are going to be rotating it toward left side that means this will get totally broken you can see here clearly there is a broken cap then there are temper evident liners such as the heat induction these are going to be applied onto the opening of the uh, container just with the help of application or with the help of use of the heat and they will attach or on to that of the surface of this uh, opening and which can be removed and uh, which once it will get removed it cannot be further resealed so that will ensure or that will confirms that it is going to be broken so these are the temper evident containers it is a container that is fitted with a device or a mechanism that will reveals irreversibly whether the container has been opened right now once it will get open the process is totally irreversible that cannot be reverted back that cannot be resealed then there is a tight types of container which is said to be the tightly closed container and the well closed container you can see there are well closed container there are tightly closed container there are hermetically sealed container there are airtight container isn't it now all these are going to be differing from each other and they will contain their details and these details you should uh, thoroughly know because these might be asked in case of the gpat examinations and you should know very clearly the differences between what do you mean by the well closed container what do you mean by tightly closed container what do you mean by hermetically sealed container what do you mean by the uh, air tight container likewise so tightly closed container is what it is a tightly closed container that will protect the content from contamination by extraneous liquids solids or vapors from the loss or deterioration of the article from effervescence deliquescence or evaporation under normal conditions of handling shipment storage and distribution a tightly closed container must be capable of being tightly reclosed after use so this is most important in case of the tightly closed container once the use is over further it should be tightly reclosed as such whereas a well closed container is what it is a well closed container that will protect the content from the extraneous solids liquids from loss of article under normal conditions of handling shipment storage and the distribution so that is the well closed container after going through the containers we have to move toward the packaging materials and the closure system so what are the different kinds of material which are going to be used 
as a packaging material so in order to form a material packaging or in order to form the product to pack we require or we need or we have the several variety of types of materials and that's the very first and very commonly used that is the glass material plastic material metal there are paper boards there are rubber there are cotton there are adhesive inks closures the glass container plastics and the metals these are most of the time used as a very very uh, material which are going to be used in case of the primary packagings rubber is also that will form the part of the primary packaging whereas cotton adhesive inks and the closures closures will also form the part of the primary packaging the cotton adhesive inks and the paper board they will form of the part of the secondary and the tertiary uh, packaging materials glass glass this is the very widely used you can see the variety of types of glass in case of the variety of types of container type like say you will going to find the round bottle there you will going to find uh, flat bottle you will going to find square shape bottle you will going to find the glass bottles for the dry constituted powder you will going to find the uh, glass bottles for the uh, liquid uh, injectable products for the parenteral products for the uh, uh, intravenous infusions right so you will going to find the light resistant glass bottles you are going to find this material for the ampules right so there is a wide variety of uh, or the there are n number of applications of use of glass material and that's why it is very very popular now this is going to be used for this much number of applications or for purposes so that is because of their advantages now what the advantages are there the first most important advantage that is the superior protective quality glass that will protect the material it has the superior protective qualities it is economical it is available at a affordable price readily available in a wide variety of sizes and the shapes the fabrication process that becomes easy so that we can convert or we can give a desired shape to that of the glass material essentially chemically inert impermeable strong and rigid it will not provide its own action so that's why it is the inert it will not show its own action it is impermeable it will not allow the entry of the gases liquids uh, airs it is strong and rigid it is tough it is robust it has regularly regularity clearance that means it is going to be approved it is going to be accepted by the regulatory agencies like say fda's it does not deteriorate with age as the age goes on or during the process of the storage during the process of the shelf life it will not get deteriorated its properties will not get changed it will provide some excellent barrier system this is the best barrier as i said that it will not allow the permeability of the air it will not allow the permeability of the gases it will not allow the permeability of the moisture it will not allow even the permeability of the light if we are using the light resistant containers so it will provide an excellent barrier against uh, every element except light with a proper closure system so colored glass especially amber that can give protection against to that of the even light also if you want to see the composition for the glass material the glass material these are composed of or these are made up of mainly the sand soda ash and the limestone so sand that is nothing but the pure silica soda ash that is the sodium carbonate limestone that is the calcium carbonate and there is a coelate so coelate that is nothing but the broken glass that is mixed with the batch and acts as a fusion agent for the entire mixture the most common cations found in case of the pharmaceutical glassware these are the cation that is the positively charged material which are these are the silicon aluminum boron sodium potassium calcium magnesium zinc and the barium whereas the only kind of anion that you will going to find in case of gas uh, in case of glass so that is the oxygen so oxygen that is the anion that is the negatively charged so you have to remember this this is the only anion which is found in case of the glass material so which it is it is the oxygen 
so again it is such a kind of question question which is going to be asked in case of the multiple choice or in case of the gpat examination the kind of anion which is going to found in case of the glass what is the answer the answer is the oxygen so this is the already we had covered all these uh, all these are the advantages uh, then you are going to find the disadvantages of course these are associated with the glass material so it is highly fragile and it's wet that is the heavy rubber so that is the limitation that is the disadvantage associated with the glass material so there are different types of the glass materials what these are there is a type 1 type 2 type 3 and the type 4 so type 1 that is the borosilicate glass so type 2 borosilicate glass that is used in case of the parental preparation because this is the pure extract glass it will not allow the leaching properties of the substances from the material into that of the product that's why it is going to be used in case of the parenteral liquid preparations so type 2 that is the treated soda lime glass type 3 that is the regular soda lime glass and the type 4 that is the general purpose soda lime glass the type 4 that is going to be used in case of the most of the products like say the solutions suspensions emulsions etc etc so type 1 let's come to the type 1 so the type 1 that is made up of silic iot 1% boron oxide that is 13% the sodium oxide 4% and the aluminum oxide 2% this is the composition for the borosilicate glass and it is the highly resistant glass it is a substantial part of the alkali and the earth cation these are going to be replaced by the boron and aluminum and the zinc that's why this is the standard and the most resistant glass it is more chemically inert than the soda lime glass which contains either none or an insignificant amount of these cations it will not contain any kind of these cations it is used to contain the strong acids and even alkalis as well as all types of the solvent so borosilicate glass that is used the addition of approximately 6% boron to form the type 1 glass that will reduce the leaching action so just by adding the 6% boron that will reduce the leaching property then there is a type 2 that is the treated soda lime glass generally the glass materials that will show the blooming or the weathering effect now what the what does this blooming or the weathering effect now upon long term storage of a glass material in the, in the damp atmosphere or at extreme temperature variations the wetting of the surface of the glass material by the condensed moisture and that will lead to that of the salts they will get dissolved out of the glass material so this effect is said to be the blooming or the weathering so what is the blooming or weathering what it is upon long storage of these glass material there is a condensation of the there is a wetting of the surface of the glass by the condensed moisture and this moisture that will cause is the salting out or the salts to come out of glass that is said to be the blooming or the weathering now commercially available soda lime glass that will be dealkalized now how this dealkalization that will be carried out that will be carried out by the sulfur treatment so these are said to be the treated soda lime glass so that is the type 2 glass which will prevents the weather effect or the blooming effect of the empty bottles so the sulfur treatment that is most important in order to avoid the process of blooming or the weathering so that is what is the treated soda lime glass why it is called treated because it is going to be treated with or it is undergone the sulfur treatment so expose the glass to an atmospheric atmosphere containing water vapor and the acidic gases so that will cause the reaction between the gases and the surface alkali forms the sulfate bloom so these sulfate blooms these are removed by washing before the filling so sulfate blooming that is nothing but the alkali that is removed from that of the glass then it is going to be treated that is the sulfur treatment which will neutralize the alkaline oxides on the surface which will render the glass more chemically resistant 
type 3 glass that is the regular soda lime glass so this regular soda lime glass it is used for the containers and these are untreated one and it is made up of the commercial soda lime glass of average or better than average chemical resistance then the type 4 or it is the general purpose soda lime glass or it is the type np glass so the containers these are made up of the soda lime glass these are supplied for non parenteral products general purpose or the np or the type 4 glass that should not be used or that is not used for the parenteral products and those intended only for the oral on the topical use so in this particular table you can see the different kinds of the types of glasses which are going to be used based on the type of particular product let's say if we want to use the material or the glass material for the ampules now if the ampule that will contain the aqueous injectable of any ph then we have to go for selection of the type one if the aqueous injectables of ph less than seven are there we have to select the type two and if non-aqueous injectables are there then we have to select the type three in case of the vials, the aqueous injectable of any pH, type 1, aqueous injectable of pH less than 7, type 2, non-aqueous injectables, type 3, and the dry powder, which are to be reconstituted before use for the parenteral use. In this case, one can go for selection of the type 4 or the NP or the general purpose soda lime glass. Then the bottles and the jars, if we want to go for packaging of the tablets capsules oral solids and the other solid for the reconstitution or a liquid like the solution suspension and the emulsions nasal and the ear drops and certain types of the external semi-solid preparations like say ruby efficient and the local irritants in such a case one has to go for selection of the type 4 general purpose or np glass whereas if we want to go for use of bottles and the jars but if the product or the type of formulation that is blood and the related product in that case we have to select the type 1 glass that is the borosilicate glass package that is say for example if it is the dropper auxiliary packaging device with certain kinds of the products then in that case one has to select the type 4 glass in case of aerosol containers, aerosol product like say solution, suspension, emulsion, and the semi solid type, we have to select the type 1 glass. The another type of material other than the glass, which is very, very popular, that is the plastic container because of their advantages. They has the advantages like say ease of manufacturing. These are available in various types of quality. There is a freedom of design to which they lend themselves and they are extremely resistant to that of the breakage these are unbreakable these are light in weight however they are associated with certain limitations in their use and these are responsible for producing certain kinds of interactions these interactions are the permeation they will allow the entry of the gases through them there is a leaching they will lead to the leaching of the certain alkalis from them into the product there is absorption absorption that is nothing but the absorption of some of the content from the product into the plastic material chemical modification like say polymerization and changing the property like say the surface charge and alteration on the properties of the plastic or the product upon storage the plastic they will undergo the process of cracking or say they will undergo the process of breaking the different kinds of the polymeric materials that are used for the production of the plastics the very commonly used of polymeric materials are the polyethylene polypropylene polyvinyl chloride polystyrene and the polyamides the very less commonly used materials are the polymethyl methacrylate polyethylene terephthalate polytrifluoroethylene and the amino formaldehydes so all these are the materials all these are the polymers that are used in order to produce the plastic materials with the help of use of the plastic in this particular table you can see the different kinds of the materials the different kinds of the uses based on their cost based on their 
values like say low density high density we are going to find there is a polyethylene which is subdivided into low density high density there is a polypropylene there is a polyvinyl chloride there is a polystyrene and acrylic multipolymers and the nitrile polymers among all these the nitrile polymer that is the very costlier plastic material whereas the polyethylene that is the available at a affordable price or which are available at a low cost whereas pvc that is available at a moderate cost also the acrylic multipolymer if you want to go for use of cosmetic personal and the products and the foods the low grade or the low density polyethylene is used in case of the detergent leeches milk foods industrial cleansing powders drugs and the cosmetics the high density polyethylene that is used in case of the drugs cosmetics syrups and the juices the polypropylene of low grade it is used in case of shampoos bath oils detergents whiskey wine flour waxes vinegar salad oils the polyvinyl chloride pvc with the moderate values is used moderate cost in case of dry drugs petroleum jellies the low cost polystyrene is used whereas in case of the foods drugs and the cosmetics acrylic multipolymers are advisable in order to pack the food drugs cosmetics chemicals aerosols carbonated beverages the nitrile polymers are used which is very very costly so again based on the type of material that is to be packed and its cost its quality and its significance one has to go for selection of all these as you can see everywhere you will going to find the cosmetic like say cosmetic uh, polyethylene material is used then here also the high density polyethylene is going to be used the polyethylene is also used the then uh, in case of these acrylic multipolymer here also you are going to find the cosmetic whereas here also you are going to find the cosmetic so what kind of cosmetic is that what is its brand value based on that one can go for selection of these product in order to improve its qualities then after glass and the plastic material the material of choice as a container material that is the metal so metal containers like say the aluminum and this stainless steel these are the metals of choice for both primary and the secondary pharmaceutical packaging most of the say like protein powder these are directly packed in case of the metal containers in the form of the primary packaging they will form the excellent tamper evident containers because as there is a an air tight and the complete sealing so it cannot undergo the process of tampering metals are strong impermeable to gases and the shatterproof so they are ideal packaging material for the pressurized containers even though if it will get burst so that will not go in the process of shattering like the case is associated with the glasses that is broken down into the smaller pieces so that is not associated with the plastic and the metal container so metal container these are advised in case of the pressurized containers what are the pressurized containers yes we saw before this particular chapter what it is very correct it is the aerosol preparations these are the pressurized dosage forms then there are some strips and the blisters if we want to go for packaging of the tablets and the capsules then these are the polymeric materials that are coated aluminum with various thickness that are available to improve the sealability of the pack and stability of the product in case of the collapsible tubes like see the formulations or in paint cream gels and the other semi solids the tube that are that are lined that are coated with that of the internal protective of the polymeric material with or without spikes that are available then if it is the cans then in case of the formulations like say aerosols inhalers and the sprays the cans are going to be used the pressure resistant and the internal polymer coated aluminum containers these are available paper and the boards these will form the secondary packaging the paper board material they will include the labels cartons bags outers trays for shape shape 
wraps layer boards on the pallets. They are having wide applications and advantages of the cartons. They will include the increase the display area. So they will provide better stacking of the product. The product that can be stacked one above onto the another with the help of the packaging by using the paper boards. And they will assemble the leaflet. The leaflet can be inserted properly into these packagings. They will provide the physical protection, especially to the items like the metal collapsible cubes. So they will not get crimped or they will not get collapsed. So they will provide the protection to the collapsible cubes. The fiber boards outers either as solid or corrugated board also find substantial application for the bulk shipment. They will help in the process of the shipment also. Some of the films, foils and the laminates, these are used. The regenerated cellulose film based on the viscose, that is the chemical used for manufacturing of the rounds and laminating two or more types of films. Cellulose coatings, foil and paper play different roles such as supportive barrier, heat seal and the decorative. In the newer technology, co-extrusion, a number of plastic piles are extruded in combination to provide the cheaper laminations. Aluminum foil, aluminum foil that is very, very popular in case of the blister packaging or in case of the alu alu packaging that is double foil aluminum system in which the tablets are going to be packed. The aluminum foil, even in the thinnest gauzes, offer the best barrier properties. They will not allow the permeability of the gases. So aluminum or the metal packaging, they will provide the best barrier system or the barrier properties, which are not approached even by the most impermeable plastics. Metallization, it is the relatively new process whereby particles of the metal are laid down onto a surface under vacuum and they can significantly improve the barrier properties of a material, but these do not approach the properties of a pure foil. Closures. So closure, depending on the type of the container, the closure may have the different shapes and the sizes. So special design of the stopper that may also be required for some pharmaceutical production processes, such as the lyophilization. Closures which form a part of the primary packaging system are very important and should therefore be chosen correctly or the carefully or the careful selection that is going to be needed because they form the primary packaging. They are directly in contact with that of the product. So they should not allow any kind of leaking, leaching or any kind of release of their content into the product or they should not absorb any content from the product. They form a social component of the container and an integral part of the drug preparation processes. The ideal requirement for the closure system, they should be resistant and compatible with the product and the product and the airspace. If closure is reclosable, it should be radially openable and effectively resealed. It will allow the opening and at the same time it will also the carry out the process of effective resealing. They should be capable of high speed application for automatic production by high speed machines without loss of seal efficiency. So you can see some of the uh, closure system here. It is the push down and the turn. That means we need to first of all push it toward the downside and then we need to turn into this way. That is the anti-clockwise direction. So again, the same is here. Here it is squeezed 